All right, so welcome to our next little tutorial here. Um, as you can see on the studio, uh, or rather in the studio here, I set up a pretty basic animation. Um, it's like a big T or a cross or something, target, just emerging. Um, no religious overtones intended, but it's essentially just two lines and that's kind of why I wanted to start with this animation. So let me take you through how I built this and what's exactly going on in the programming here. So you can see here, uh, all of my programming is actually pretty simple. Uh, note that there are just a couple projectors. There's two projectors here, which I'm actually using in this effect. And this projector here is just giving my uh, stage three here so you can have the visual on screen. Now, each projector is hooked up to a shape. So we can take a look at the shape itself. So I'm just gonna put the bypass on on this one, which is highlighting this next shape. So here's just a very similar line to what we did before. And there is some animation happening. Now to do this, instead of using the wave generator, I've used the envelope generator instead. And I've just uh, designed it to work based on the trigger, which is coming from what's called a pulse generator. The pulse generator is a lot like the wave generator. Uh, you can find it, same with envelope generator, simply by double clicking and searching for either pulse generator, as you can see there, or wave generator, oh, sorry, not wave generator, uh, envelope generator, which you find right there. What an envelope generator is doing is it allows me to go from whatever value I like, in this case, zero, uh, to whatever value I like. In this case, it's actually going up to 149. Uh, I can change these in here. Right now, it's just the minimum maximum scales that I've set up. And that's the same thing happening on this other one. Uh, so if I were to put this bypass on here, which would be this shape. Now you can see there's nothing. And when I turn the bypass on here, we've got this shape happening. So let's turn them both back on. So now they just happen together. So that's just a simple way that you can use this. Um, a reminder of other things you can do is you can always switch the projector should you want to. So right now we're on stage two, which is the big projector I've got set up in the studio. If I wanted to throw one of these onto, say, the small screen, then I would just go to number one. And now you can see it's happening on the small screen. Or I can put it back to the first. However, I like to make that happen. So that's the first one. Now, the next scene I'm going to show you is pretty much the same thing, but I've made a few modifications. So there we go. We'll click to make it initialize. A little bit more violent, you could say, a little bit more frantic. Uh, this is the same thing. The only difference is I've added an additional pulse generator, an additional envelope generator. So I just wanted to make this very, very shaky. So to do that, I put this at a high frequency so that this is being triggered very quickly. And essentially, it's the same envelope generator that I had here. I simply just copied it and pasted it. And that was all it took to get this effect going. Now, what I did instead, let's take this away. Can we take a look at this one? What I did instead was I connected it to the vertical position of this line. So let me turn the other one off so that you are not necessarily looking at the wrong line. So here we are in the studio and we can see this uh, horizontal line going. Now all I have to do if I want to get rid of this pulse is I can switch this function to off and this is just a simple function happening. It's done it once, it goes away. So that's pretty much all you need to do to get, say, a shaky effect, if that's what you wanted. That's an option of a thing you can do. I'm just going to bring the other one back on. 
and it'll just give you something different. How you choose to use these, you can of course attach them to different effects. It's just another way that you can work within an existing design to give it a little bit more life. I can also change the pace of this or whatever I like. Simply that would just come from going to the pulse generator, say here, and I can adjust the frequency to something to change it a little bit. So now I'm bringing the frequency of this one to something a little bit more manageable. And you're seeing just the vertical line now has the kind of rickety ghosty effect. And the other lines remains pretty simple. If I bring it down, I start to get the same thing. I'm sending it flying now as I affect the vertical position. If I want to affect the zoom, I can also do that likewise by going to this envelope generator here and affecting the frequency by clicking here. And you can see the changes happening on screen. I make it larger and smaller. So these effects can be used, uh, or just using something like this can be used to, if you think of projection as a lighting source, which is becoming more and more common. Um, it's a great way to work, say, if you work in a site-specific space and you don't actually have lights, but you can get a projector. Um, we stock a lot of, uh, we have three projectors on site uh, that are available for rental that are pretty bright and they can, uh, they can really go a long way. So other things you can do to come and experiment in the studio with. Okay, so uh, I just went into the studio and uh, put a little bowling pin down. Uh, we're not quite a bowling pin, but something like a bowling pin. So I'm gonna show you how you could use this as a lighting source so that I can light the bowling pin. So I've got my rickety vertical line going and I'm just gonna go and go to the appropriate shape, which is this one here. The height being 200, the width being 56, easy way to remember it. And I'm gonna just move the position of this. So if I wanted to, actually the vertical position's not so much important here. It's the horizontal. I can move it along so that as it goes, we just start to see a little bowling pin there. Now I can also just use this purely as a lighting source. I can stop the range of motion that I've got set up, which would mean taking out the envelope generator. So if we look here, we've got an envelope generator, which is affecting the horizontal position of the projector itself. So a couple things we can do. One of the easiest ones to do is just select and delete. Now it's gone. We'll stick the horizontal position of the projector now back to zero. And we've got the shape now. So the shape is now just simply moving along to the right. And if we want to stop all motion, we'll delete this one here. We're back to simply just the shape. So if you look into the studio now, you'll be able to see that we've got two static lines. And I'm going to move the horizontal position just over to the point or I can light that bowling pin. But as you can see, I run into a bit of an issue because as I go a little bit further, I actually cut off. I can't go any further than that. So let's take a look as to why that is. So the horizontal position here can go from negative 200 to 200. So that's fine. That shouldn't be an issue. So let's check the horizontal position here, negative 100 positive 100. So that should be fine as well. But since I set it to zero, I'm somewhat limited. So here working with the projector, I can now 
light the bowling pin as we try to focus in. I'm just going to adjust the camera. So as you can see now, the bowling pin is perfectly lit by this beam of light.